Amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise, y'all. Amen. Give God some praise. Worthy of it all. Amen. Amen. We brought us here another opportunity here from heaven. And I'm excited. Yes. Because God has provided for us to even be here yes. now. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Sometimes we take things for granted. You know. Amen. Um, God knows our number. I don't have to know my number. You shouldn't have to know yours. Well, I was at when your when your number's called, you be ready. Amen. You be ready. Amen. I'll ask you to have your Bibles to turn to Genesis chapter six. And we read it a little bit, touched on it a little bit in our, our reading. And uh, uh, understanding and, and memorizing and uh, knowing scripture comes by repetition. That's why we usually read the reading uh, in our responsive reading, and then we go talk about it. So we learn that way. We got to hear it over and over again. That's how we learn. So just for some of y'all didn't know that. Anyway, in here in Genesis chapter six, God, uh, from verses one through four, was having a little problem. The world was going through some problems and. Uh, in the spiritual realm, things was happening, and the spiritual realm actually started to uh, involve itself and, and, and attack the physical realm. So things would begin to go haywire because of man's heart. And here in verse 5, it explains through verse 9 uh, the whole story of the, the direction that we're going today. And so verse 5 says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, now God's saying this. He saw it way back then. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continuously. And God said, It repented the Lord that he made man. See that? Jesus. On the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth both man and beast, and creeping thing, and the fowls of the air. For it repented me that have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Thank God for Noah. Yes. Amen. <laughs> thank God for Noah. And thank God for us. Lord, don't do it. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Let's try this again. <laughs> And then he says in verse, uh, uh, well, that's verse 8, and he says, uh, And now, neither the generations of Noah was, uh, was a just man and, his, and, uh, and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. He walked with God. So the, all these things that was going on, and God was upset that he made man, uh, uh, Noah found grace in the eyes of God. God saw his heart. Yes. Uh, and the title today is, Righteousness will always prevail over evil. Remember that. Righteousness will always prevail over evil. Always. We uh, have been probably informed by now the news that happened in Texas with the killing at the elementary school. And um, it's like it was almost like another duplication of Sandy Hook. I believe it was 21 kids that actually that killed a couple of teachers, and I think this one was 10. Uh, uh, 19, it was 19 and two uh, teachers, but it was something that actually happened after all the chaos. Was one of the husbands of the teacher died of a heart attack, and he died of a broken heart. Um, Fear swept the nation. Yes. You know, you had your basic, uh, when these things happen, you, you see um, everyone wants to put a, talks about mental illness. And we talk about gun control. We all do this and we all do that. But, you know, people talk about the new normal. Well, according to this scripture, the new normal has always been the same to God. <clears throat> we just as uh, uh, believers in 
we see, and, and it, it helps us really understand, God is true to his word. He's true to his word. Uh, evil's here. He tells us when we pray, deliver us from evil. Amen. Yeah. You know, uh, he tells us that in the, um, the 23rd Psalm, he will prepare a table for us in the presence of our enemies. So they there. Evil's all around. Evil has been here since the garden. And it's been here since the garden. The fall in the man. And we must be able to look at it from God's perspective. People say, we ain't going back to the way we used to be. But it's always been the same way to God. <laughs> this normal, this new normal is, is, is right on course. More people are aware and see what's going on. And people, the Bible tells us in Matthew 24, says, man's heart is failing him for fear of the things that's coming upon the earth. And people don't know what to turn to. People are going out buying guns and trying to defend themselves. and They don't know what to do. But hopefully today, after we look at these, these scriptures and look at the word, and we can see it from God's perspective that righteousness will always prevail over evil. You know, I, I, um, it was a little video, it was a video that uh, one of the members sent me this week. And I showed it to some of my family members. It was a little boy, about eight, nine years old. And he's, his teacher is interviewing him. And he says, uh, she says, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? He said, I want to be a murderer. Yeah. He said, I want to be a murderer because, you know, I just like, he said, this is interesting. He said, something said to my brain that it's okay to kill. And he, he was pretty, he was pretty sincere about his eight, nine years old. The teacher was totally, she was totally shocked by his statement. So why do you want to kill? He said, because... Uh, I, I think it's cool. I, I think it's cool to kill. And uh, he said, I wouldn't kill my family members. And she said, well, what about me? You know, she said, well, I, I probably wouldn't kill my teachers. But I would probably kill everybody else in the whole wide world. Wow. And she said, so you're sure about this? He said, so I asked you a question again. What do you want to be? I want to be a murderer. I want to kill. So, you know, you, you, you hear things like that. And... Uh, you look at some of the kids that went to the school and kids all around the country. To, in their minds, school is a place where you go get killed. Jesus. Think about it. <laughs> so uh, you, you look at the guy in uh, Buffalo, New York, and he plotted this whole thing out. You know, and he wanted to kill black folks, and um, he succeeded somewhat. To kill ten elderly people, <laughs> and um, you know the, the race comes in, and you hear that, and people get furious about you know the race war. But then you, you take his point of view, which was demonic yeah. and evil in a sense, but somewhere in his mind he said to himself, "Well, they're killing each other in Philadelphia." You see, you know, uh, uh, black on black crime is escalating, mainly in the, in, the, in the city of Philadelphia. And he said, well, why are you coming at me? Think about that. And I started thinking, I said, well, he has a point there, but it was all satanic, either way you look at it. But, if, you know, to him it was justifiable what he did. And we, we, we see these things and, and we kind of like, you know, we get in an uproar, but evil's always been present. It ain't about race. Amen. See, Satan will send a strong delusion <clears throat> yep. to have us focus on something yeah. that ain't really the key point. Mm -hmm. That's how that's what he does. <clears throat> the Bible says our enemy is not flesh and blood, but principalities and powers, yeah. spiritual wickedness in high places. Yeah. That's who we fight against. Amen. Ain't got nothing to do with what, what you look like. See, God died for a human race, not a race. That's right. He died for man. Amen. Man may live. But Satan comes in and he lies and he twists things. And here, this is where we are. We look at our movies in the last 30 or 40 years. They're loaded with violence. Yeah. You look at the games that people play. I mean, one of the most popular games out there on PlayStation is 
Grand Theft Auto. And all they do is kill. You know, you got some of these videos and these young kids are getting a hold of them and they walking around and they learn how they learn how to kill people. This guy asked him Buffalo asked the live stream his killing of those folks up in Buffalo. Satanic, but he did it. And you know, you you, you look at that and you uh, uh, you see how evil that is. But there's nothing new to God. There's nothing new under the sun. He said when he made man, his heart was evil continuously. And this is how he, he was. And, but God found grace in, in the eyes of Noah. Noah was like, hey, man, I, 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 I hear you. And the call for us today, do we hear God? Do we hear God's voice? Are we going to fall for all the stuff that, you know, we're going to have us fighting at each other? You know, when, when, when you hear the term killing two birds with one stone, that's how Satan is. He wants us to at, at each other. You are my problem while I'm in this situation. And I must attack you. And what happens is we, we cease to exist because the second command is love thy God, love thyself. And the other neighbor as we love thyself. But sad the same people don't love themselves because they don't know God because they haven't loved God first. So they can't love themselves. So how can they possibly love you? So we got to understand. I, I wrote down here, I want to define normal for us. And normal means conforming to a standard that is usual or typical or expected. And we talk about this new normal. So a lot of us didn't expect this, but God knew it was, it was coming. He knew it. But we didn't see the underline of the movement of evil upon this world. But uh, it, it, we... we, we if to the forefront, but since we are exposed to so much light of the word of God and truth, we see evil. One of the scriptures in the Bible says to love God is to hate evil. So when we love God and we commit ourselves to God, we see evil more than some other folks because they don't see evil because they're blinded by the God of this world. Yes. Amen. And they can't believe, they don't understand because they're not born again. They can't decipher. That's when Nicodemus came to Jesus. He said, he says, uh, uh, um, you know, you must be from God. And, and Jesus knew where he was coming from. He knew his motive. He said, surely you must be born again. You can't even come and come and enter the kingdom of God. And we know that the kingdom of God is a place that's within us. You can't even understand what's going on until I, Jesus was telling until I wake, awaken you by my spirit to give you insight and understanding what's going on. I mean, you know, some tragedies in my in my in my own family just yesterday and 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 and, and uh, I look at it as God knew. God knows. But somebody else's family in the world experienced tragedy. Mm -hmm. You know? Thousands of people. And this is all according to God's calendar and God's plan. We gotta be ready. We gotta be righteous. <laughs> Amen. We gotta believe this God that we say we serve. Yeah. And we gotta know this God because God, you know, the main comes down to does does God know us? Amen. 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 Yeah. And I want to define evil for you if I can. Evil is it's an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous. Likely to cause pain, amen, to us. This week I posted face on, on Facebook, and uh, um, it was a thing I had I had to put it out there. And I, when I saw it, so other people can see it, it says somebody wrote, "We will never create enough laws to control evil. Evil does not obey laws." <laughs> Amen. Amen. Another listing that I posted. It was a listing of all the killings since Calvary. Remember that the two guys that raided the school out there? And uh, I think it was Democrat, somewhere out that way, out west. And I looked at it, it was over 300 total elementary, you include Sandy Hook, you include Virginia Tech a couple years ago, maybe 10 years ago, uh, over 300 shootings and killings at elementary, junior high, high school, and college. So it's been going on. 
It's been going on. It's not going to stop. One of the signs that Jesus told his disciples that these are the beginning of sorrows. There's going to be wars and rumors of wars, earthquake, pestilence, famines. This is going to happen. But where's our focus? Where should our focus be? The return of Christ. It was something on the news that I was telling my brother yesterday that, you know, we all look at the news and we check the weather and everything. But the one thing they, they said, but they quickly, it wasn't really that important, but they, they talked about it. And it hit me. And fear came to me, but a, a, a reverential fear. And this reverential, respectful fear came to me, and it was, they talked about uh, the astronomers. Don't under, they can't understand in the last couple weeks that heavens, the universe, is strange things that's happening. Amen. Amen. Planets are moving and stars are clashing into each other. And, and they don't under, they can't understand what's going on. Wow. And the first thing that came to my mind was, he's coming. Amen. He's coming. This been, I mean, for years, you know, the stars and the sun and the things have been just there. Amen. But now they're going, they're going off. And then they, they just cut and went to something else. And I was like, that was important. <laughs> I mean, all this stuff. But I want you to talk about this. But this is important over here. And I began to look at it and, and I began to say, okay. And another thing, what I do, my sister kind of mentioned, one of the things I do on Facebook, I always, uh, and I think somebody said to me, man, you, you kind of like, you know, you, you're showing your feminine side. And I, that was so sad, you know, and I, because I, every day I, I, I send pictures of flowers and songs and beautiful scenery of, of God's creation. Yes. Because we need something pleasant to look at. Yes. Yes. You know, I'm tired of looking at stuff that, you know, you know, earthquake over here, 30,000 people died, but here's the big story. Isn't that big enough? You know? You know, when, we, when, I, when, I, when I place these things, the flowers to be always been, I was always amazed by the colors of flowers. Amen. There's something about them since you know, you work, you, yeah. that's, you know, you work around this stuff, and it, it, it allows you to have peace and comfort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it, it's, you know, y'all don't talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. If that's, it's, that's, that's feminine, feminine, that's cool, because remember, Eve came from Adam. That's right. <laughs> so if Eve came from Adam, amen, amen, we, God got in us. Right. Yeah. Praise amen. God. Sure, amen. But, um, I put that out there for healing and, and, and yes. have people understand things. But Jeremiah 17, 9 says this. The heart is deceitful above all things. The heart, mind, spirit, is deceitful above all things and is desperately wicked. God said, who can know it? In uh, Isaiah 5, 14, it says, I'm reading it from the King James. I want to read it from the Amplified Bible for you. And I've got it here for you. It says this, Isaiah 5, 14 says this. Therefore, hell has enlarged itself. I'll say it again. Therefore, hell has enlarged itself and opened her mouth without measure. And their glory and their multitude and their prompt, he that rejoiced, amen, shall descend into it. Watch the Amplified Bible. Therefore, soul, hell, the realm of the dead, has increased its appetite and open its mouth beyond measure. Because of the evil, hell is enlarging. Why? The Bible says this, and Jesus said it plainly in Matthew chapter 7. He says, Broad is the way to destruction, and as many on that road. But there's a road that is narrow, and there's few on it. Years ago, it was a commercial about joining the Marines. It said, Be one of the few on the proud. Okay, that's cool, but I want to be one of the few on the proud that know the truth. Yes. That's the list I want to be on. Amen. That's, that's the list we want to make. And so we see that. I'm going to finish reading. It says, um, uh, praise God. And Jerusalem, Jerusalem's splendor, her multitude, her bushes, a boisterous uproar, and her drunkenness reveal a descent into it. So hell is getting bigger and bigger. And this is the trick of the enemy because Satan has bonded the minds of them who believe not. And that's what he's doing when you don't believe. When the gospel, you know, we can say that when they took prayer out of schools, and we can say this happened, this happened, it was going to happen. Because Satan is against everything that is righteous. 
His whole focus is to kill, rob, and destroy. But we as believers got to trust and know God. Amen? Oh, praise God. Watch this. Amen. 2 Timothy 3, 13 says this. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Even in our very churches today, we've got people in the pulpits who are serpents. They're gouging people, not telling them the truth. You know, using them for filthy lucre. And it's been going on for years. And that's why I said the other couple of days ago, a couple of weeks ago, how you look at Colbert and how some of these churches were shut down. All these, you know, big money market, you know, things that was happening. It wasn't the gospel, but it was all fake. God shut them down because he's tired. He's tired of people are dying to go to hell because nobody's telling them the truth. Because when you tell somebody the truth, it'll make them free. I don't care how much it hurts them, but it's, you know, it's people in hell right now that say, why don't you tell me the truth? Why don't you beat me up and over my head and knock me out and let me know what the truth was? And this is why it's so important that we know the truth, because the truth does make us free. In Matthew 10, 28 and 29 says this, well, 28 says this. Jesus is speaking to his disciples. He says, Fear not those who can take the body, but him that can take the body and soul in hell. I've stole over, kind of read the back part of that, but listen. It says, Fear not them which can kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear or respect him, Almighty God, which is able to destroy both soul and body. In hell. In other words, God is in control of everything. He knows what we're leaving here. And you can you can go get your guns. You can you can hold on to the second uh, uh, amendment, and you can you can barbage yourself in, in, in places and and uh, and, and uh, have your basement loaded with ammunition. But when it's time to come, you don't see. Don't be concerned about how you leave here. And that's not simply your concern. The concern is when you leave here, where you're going. Amen. 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 So the concern is, it doesn't matter how we leave here, it's where you're going when you leave here. Because our life will determine where we're going yeah, <laughs> and where we're going to end up. So he's telling them here, don't worry about who can kill your body. Don't worry about that. i got control of your soul. It's a point of the man wants to die, Hebrews 9, 27. Uh, uh, it's a point of the man wants to die, then the judgment. So the judgment is, what did you do with my son? What did you do? Yeah. Did you hear my son? Did you hear my preachers? Did you hear my word? Did you hear my truth? That's what we all focus on. But Satan is a, causing all types of delusions and all types of diversions to keep us away from what the truth is. That's what's going on. People are out about all about themselves. Well, we got to take a moment and just to smell the flowers. And actually, when I put flowers out there on Facebook, I'm doing it because, you know, I, I always used to always hear at funerals, you know, give me my flowers while I'm alive. Yes. Amen. 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 And that's why I do it, you know. I, I, here, here's your flowers. Here's, here's the beauty. Here's the creation of God. Yes. And see, we, we were created in the image of God. Yes. Man was. But here we see in that, in that Genesis how man was like, hey, I'm doing my own thing. Because in the garden, sin had entered in. Sin is escalating. Evil is escalating. But we must stay this course and realize that righteousness will always prevail. That all things work together for good to those who love him, to those who call according to his purpose. No matter what happens or what comes our way, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Amen. You know, stuff is going to happen down here. It's going to happen. Trouble in my way? Jesus will fix it. Amen. 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 Praise God. God is good. Amen. God is good. And then we look at uh, uh, God didn't, did not give us the spirit of fear. He didn't give us the spirit of fear. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says this. God did not give us the spirit of fear. I wonder who gave it to us then. See, there's, fear is a, is a thing that is normal. You know? Uh, uh, some of us might have a fear of spiders, arachnophobia. 
Some might have a fear of heights. Some of us might have fear of electricity. That's cool. But there's a fear that the enemy has given us that God is saying, look, I didn't give you that fear. That didn't come from me. That came from the enemy. You can try to hide, like I said, you can, you can try to surround yourself with all type of weaponries. And, I mean, you look at some of these murders that these kids were, these kids, these uh, young men who have committed. Uh, it's all out of fear. It's all out of fear. If you go deep inside their life and see what happened to them, it was all stemmed from fear and, and, and things that they, they, they were afraid to face, you know? And the enemy just twisted it and had them become so sinister that they wanted to take out everybody. And I started really having sympathy for the young man in Texas that killed those kids. And people say, how can you have sympathy for that? Because the first thing I thought about, the minute that he, when he killed those kids, he went straight down like lightning to hell. Yeah. And he probably had no idea what that was all about. No, 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 no. And it hit him. Reality hit. And Satan roared out with that big laugh. Ha ha! I fooled another one. Amen. Fooled another one. And see, it's not flesh and blood. This is a spiritual battle that we're in. That we're in. We all must recognize our spiritual man must be instilled with energy and power. That energy is, is, is the grace of God. It must be manifested in our life on a daily basis. Because we don't know when our, our, our hour is up. But while we're here, we got to tell somebody about the goodness of God. Either through our testimony or mainly through the way we live and carry ourselves. We've got to carry ourselves in a way that people can see our light and it, you know, it'll shine. And the angels in heaven, they rejoice. And, and there goes the servant of God lifting up Jesus. He said, if I be lifted up, I draw all men unto me. And we all have that responsibility as believers, regardless of what happens in our life. Yeah. We can still say, but God is good. Amen. God is faithful. Yeah. God will prevail. Righteousness will always prevail over evil, no matter what happens. Mm -hmm. But there's some people who are oblivious to everything, what life is really all about. Because we said earlier in Isaiah, hell has enlarged itself. But in that 2 Timothy uh, verse 1 7, it says, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but listen, but power, but first of all, but love and power, listen, in a sound mind. When you are bombarded with fear, unnecessary fear, fear of the enemy, your mind ain't sound. You talk about, uh, they, they look at the, they, they say, uh, uh, um, mental, mental, uh, 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 what do you call it? Men Disorders. Uh, mental illness. We all suffer from mental illness. Amen. There you go. If you look at it, Amen. there's some type of mental illness. There's some type of, we haven't, if you don't receive the word of God which cleans us, Amen. we're going to suffer from some type of mental illness that we won't be able to see from the perspective of God. Amen. We won't be able to see it. Until our mind is clean with the Word of God and the Spirit of God, can we really see how disturbed we really are? We read there in Jeremiah 17, 9, remember? The heart is deceitfully wicked above all things. Who can know it? Man, we, we messed up people. But thank God, because of the grace of God. Amen? We got hope. We got hope. How can somebody be delivered by God and turn around and do something evil? It's coming, because you and I have done it. Amen. Peter, Amen. Jesus said, who do you say that I am? The Spirit touched Peter. He said, you are the son of the living God. Amen. And Jesus said, flesh and blood did not be that to you, but my Father which is in heaven. But about ten minutes down the road, right. in the same conversation, this Peter, who was anointed by the Holy Spirit, Amen. when Jesus said, look, y'all, I'm going to Jerusalem. The scribes and the Pharisees are going to hurt me, and they're going to kill me. But don't worry about it. I'm going to get up in three days. And Peter said, you ain't got to do this. But Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. Amen. It wasn't that Peter was Satan. It was that thought yeah. that he accepted yeah. unknowingly. That's how Satan does. 
We could be so good out here, and over here, we've done something evil. Come on, somebody. Amen. Ain't no Amen. perfect folk on this planet. No. Yeah. We need the Savior. Yeah. We need Him. Yeah. You know, the Bible tells us 365 times in the Bible to fear not. That's one for every day. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Because you walk out the door and you, you wake up tomorrow morning and, 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 and uh, hopefully by, by the grace of God and we travel all around the world. Amen. And we go to these places and not knowing that, you know, fear is all around us in the spiritual realm. Trying to penetrate our soul and our mind to get us to do whatever against God. But think about the people who have no idea that they are puppets for the enemy. And he's walking right to the cliff. Man. And some of them are jumping in the pit. You know, I go to hell, I be with my friends. No, you won't. Yeah. You might hear somebody familiar, but it's, it's black down there. There's no relief. There's no breath. There's no nothing. There's no relief. There's no peace. Wow. There's no peace. Satan has been, he's been very successful in deceiving people. This is what it's all about. But we ain't blind. We once were blind. But now we see. Amen? Amen. We gotta keep on seeing. Every day we gotta keep on seeing what's happening. This is the we gotta fight the good fight of faith. Whatever the word said, we gotta believe and keep on fighting. Amen. Amen. Listen. Mm. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, the Bible tells us in uh Psalms. The, the evil, evil was going to be punished, by the way. Yeah. Like I said, the title of his message was, Righteousness will always prevail evil. And Psalms 5, verse 5 says this. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. This is God talking. Thou hast hate, thou hated all workers of iniquity. God hates evil. Psalms 139, 21 says, God is saying, Do not I hate them? O oh Lord, that hate thee, and, and I am not grieved with those that rise up against thee. Hosea 9, 15 says, All their wickedness is in God, for there I hated them, for the wickedness of their doing, I will love them no more. God ain't playing. He ain't playing. Watch this. Mm. I like this one. Psalm 69, 28 says, let them be blotted out of the book of the living and not be written with the righteous. We got to be righteous. We got to be righteous, man. We got to be righteous. Amen? We got to be righteous. The Bible says life is like a vapor. You ever sit there and watch a teapot go to a boil and you hear it and then it starts to whistle and you see the steam coming out? But as you're looking at it, it disappears just right in front of your face. That quick, you see it, but then it's gone. That's how short life is. That's how short life is. People say when you hear somebody passed away, um, where they was 95 years old. I say, oh, that was a good old life. But somebody 65 or 70, oh, they were young. 90 was young. What the life that really matters is eternal life. You see? Because this is just a testing ground for us down here, y'all. Amen. All of us are hearing the gospel at this very moment. And those will be hearing it later on. You got to understand that this gospel is, is presented to us because, like the brother said in his testimony, this is the key to the kingdom. Amen. He said, heaven and earth are going to pass away, but my words are going to last forever. Amen. And Jesus is the word. And beginning with the word. And the word was with him. And the word was God. And the word became flesh and dropped, and dropped among us. Yeah. This is the word of God. And it's something about this word that heals us and sets us free. I mean, it does something to, I don't know about you, but I love the word. Because the word first loved me. It first loved me. Where well, everybody didn't, they said they loved me, but they, their actions didn't show me that they loved me. But God loved me. All my faults and all my mistakes, He still loved me. And why not serve a God like that? 
but we're up against something. You know, we're up against something that's attacking our soul and our mind and our, and our thought pattern. Like I said in the video about the little boy, and the teacher asked him, who do you want to be? And he said, I want to be a murderer. He said something, he said, my brain said to me. In other words, it wasn't his brain. It wasn't his mind. The devil said to him, kill. This is what you want to do? Because he has been bought by eyesight and, ear, and, and, and hearing all the things that this, this world has to offer. That's why we can't love this world. No, no. The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. It ain't about us. It's not about our lives. It's about the life of God in us. Greater heat is in us than heat is in the world. I mean, we're supposed to be dying to ourselves every single day. Every day we're supposed to be dying to ourselves. Every day you and I do something stupid. And we get on ourselves, don't we? That's a good thing. Ain't not what God would do. But I thank God for the self-examination. I thank God for his perfect law and liberty, his mirror. When you hear the word, it's like, come on, Rod, you can't do that. Come on, man. Trust this God. He can, he can work it through you. It's not our might by our power, but it's by his strength. I, I want to look at this uh, uh, scripture, and I want to close with this. I want you to turn to Ephesians, and, and, and I want to see the condition of man without Christ. And here's the condition. It's in Ephesians chapter 4. Are oh, we still here? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Um, Ephesians 4. Look at 17 if you can. Amen. It says, um, Paul says, This I say therefore, in verse 17 of Ephesians chapter 4, and testify in the Lord that ye, you believers, listen, listen, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. In other words, Gentile representing non-believers. Hey, I don't want you to walk like them. I don't want you not to know what's happening. I don't want you to be ignorant. I want you to know the truth because it'll make you free. So don't be walking around like you don't know what's going on and living like you don't know what's going on. Because no one day you got to give an account for the way you've been living. So don't walk around like you don't know. And you don't even act like you know. Know that you know. Amen. Then it goes on to say, having the understanding darkened. See, the understanding darkened. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Well, I thank God I don't have no ignorance in me, and you thank God for the same thing. We have the Holy Spirit in us, and he, He's not going to have us ignorant because He wants us to know. He's light. People say to me, well, where do you know where, where's Satan at? Where's the devil at? Where's evil at? Evil is, evil is anywhere there's darkness. That's where evil is. Anywhere there's darkness, that's where evil is. But when the Word comes, it brings light. It brings light. Watch this. Uh, Alien for the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Being past, being, who being past feelings have given themselves over it like viciousness to work all on cleanliness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Christ in Jesus. Now watch this. I'm going to explain that verse because some people don't understand it. It says in 21, if so be that ye have heard him. Now people go to church all the time and they hear the word. They hear what God is saying. But here's the key. But you've got to be taught by him. How can you be taught by him when the spirit ain't in you? You can't. Because that's how he teaches us. See, this is just like school. We come in, we hear the, we hear the word, we hear the message, and then we go out, and then enemy attacks us, and we have to answer to what's going on out here because the Holy Spirit is going to bring things back to remembrance, how we're supposed to conduct ourselves and live and, and focus and, 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 and conduct ourselves in this world. Amen? That's the Holy Spirit's job. But the Spirit has to teach us. Like in your testimony, sister, you, and that's why I said you're just walking in grace because we fall down. Amen? We fall down, but we can get back up again. Amen? We sinners, we can sin, but we can sin less. We know we sin. It's going to happen. It's, it's no way around it while we're in this world. Because we have a flesh that's going back to the dust. We have a nature that's a sin nature. 
And sometimes that's our biggest enemy. But as we go closer to, to the grace of God, understanding of God's word, we begin to see how to put this body in check. When it tells us in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, I present to you, present your body as a living sacrifice. He didn't say kill yourself, because that's what usually fact sacrifice is. You kill yourself. But he said present your body as a living sacrifice by faith. Just give your body to me, and I'll handle it. Let me finish reading here. He had been taught by him as the truth is in Christ Jesus. That's why we've got to keep hearing the truth. Because it teaches us things. Are we here? Are we still here? Amen. We've got a couple more minutes. Don't, hold on. Hold on. Man. He said, <clears throat> But ye put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that ye put on the new man, which after the God is created in the righteousness and true holiness. So in other words, we talked about it last week. Take off, put on. But how do you do that? 23, verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So we have to be renewed. We don't live by bread alone. But by every word. That ain't just a saying. That's a fact. That's a fact. Because when he's telling us in that Ephesians chapter 6, when he talks about put on the whole armor of God, and breastplate of righteousness, and shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, take the shield of faith, which is able to quench all the fear of thoughts of the wicked. He said, then you want you to take the sword. Remember Jesus, when he came to the disciples, he said, I didn't come to give you peace. I come to give you a sword. A word. That's how we fight. You know? You can't just sit by and say, Lord, going to take care of it. You got to fight. The kingdom of God suffers bottom, but the bottom take it by force. In other words, you got to know this word. Because we're going to, the enemy's going to come at you. He's going to see you know you do you know that you know. He's going to, that's how he's going to, he's coming. But we got to be able to say, look up for redemption draw of nine. God, you got this. God, you got everything. I'll rest in you. I have peace in you. I'm, I'm going to close with this one verse. Uh, I said that before, but he just pointed back to my. I said, I know. I didn't want to lie. I'm just saying. Luke 6. Luke 6. Luke 6. I believe it's. Um, let me see here. I think it's 24. If I'm not mistaken. I see when I get over there. Amen. God is good. No, no, it's 45. Luke 6:45. Sorry. It just that verse just came to me just a couple of minutes ago. It's a, a good man of the good treasure of his heart bring forth that which is good. And an evil man of the evil treasure of his heart bring forth that which is evil. For the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. So what's going on here? You ain't got to tell nobody you're good. If you're good, it's going to come up. It's going to show up. Amen. If you're righteous, righteousness is going to flow. See? See? The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And we got a peace. When you're walking with the Lord, you got a peace. That passes of all understanding. And evil is going to escalate. Don't look at that. Look at the righteous. Hold on to the righteous. Amen. Make sure that you're righteous. Not your own righteousness, but his righteousness. Make sure that you ain't depending on yourself to get through this life. It ain't up to you. You can't do it. He's already done it. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Put your trust in him. He defeated this enemy. This enemy knows this. He knows that he has a very short time. So he's causing, he's throwing all kind of fear bombs out here. And everybody's, what's going on? What's, what's the world coming to? We're right on schedule. According to God, ain't no new normal to him. This is normal. This is normal. Just people just, he, it just it's a new level. They're waking up. They say, what's going on? That's what he wants. He wants us to look up. If you've been risen with Christ, seek those things that are above and not on the earth. Set your affections on your minds on things on, on above. Folks, I'm telling you right now, it's time to start walking like you know. Yeah. Acting like you know. 
living like you know. Yeah. Because any day, any moment, it could be over. Yeah. And did you do what God wanted you to do? Did you carry out His will? He saved you not to sit on a church pew and feel good and get goosebumps from your favorite songs. <laughs> he saved us for a reason. To yeah. tell somebody. To actually, uh, I, I look at the Jew. Jew says this, 22 and 23. Some have compassion. Some have compassion. Pulling them from the flame. We, we're the ones who all have compassion for people who are, who are evil, who are doing wrong, who are blinded by the God of this world. We don't have compassion and say, Lord, have mercy on them. Open their eyes. May I be a light so they can see. Because then people are going, when, they go, when you go, so when you separate from God, and it's no, well, you know, whatever. No, it's eternal destruction. But I thank God for righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen.